Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Or not. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. How's it? Some of y'all are like, Thanksgiving already? I, you know, I was at the store yesterday, and I was like, what are all these people doing here? And, and I realized, oh, it's Thanksgiving. So uh, exciting week coming up. Maybe for some of y'all, you're dreading the week, but hey, it's going to be a good week. So uh, we're actually, I'm Joel, by the way, and we're going to finish up our series today uh, called Big Perspective, where we've been looking at 2 Corinthians, where Paul says this. He says, we don't keep our eyes fixed on what we can see. We fix our eyes on what's unseen. Because what we see, that's temporary, and that's not the real deal. The real deal is what we don't see and what God is doing and what he is working in our lives even when we can't see it. So we stay focused on that. And so we've been talking about how to do that. We talked about how, to, uh, how God is keeping a big perspective on the present circumstances, on your future circumstances, on your past. And today I want to frame it all up with talking about gratitude which makes total sense, right? Because it's Thanksgiving. So this week uh, I was preparing the message and usually I know by, well, usually I actually know a week in advance what I'm gonna talk about. And this week I knew I was gonna talk about gratitude, but I had this message all prepared. And yesterday I'm sitting there looking at it and I'm going, I don't like this. I don't like what I got here. And I didn't like the angle I had on it. And, you know, I've preached several messages on gratitude. And I was like, I don't, I was actually kind of bored with my angle on it. I'm like, if I'm bored with it, they're going to be really bored with it. So I was like, Lord, I need you to show me kind of something special in my life to really, like, how do I really apply this in my life? And, um, you know, you know, don't ask God for something unless you really want it. I had a guy was telling me the other day, he's kind of new to the faith, and he's like, man, I was out, I've just been asking God to give me patience. I'm like, rookie mistake, don't ask for that. Because if you ask for patience, he'll give you an opportunity to be patient. Ooh. And you'll learn patience, right? So, you know, but I'm like, okay, Lord, I need you to show me this so I can really share something, you know, really potent tomorrow morning. Well, usually when that happens, I wake up about three in the morning on Sunday morning, and I've got a clear thought, and I run out, and I write it on my computer. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. This morning, I still got nothing, okay? So we live in Kerrville, which is an hour and a half from here. So on Sunday mornings, we're up at about five, Emily's up at about 5.30, I'm up about six, getting ready to drive out here. By 6.40, we've gotta be in the car driving over here to make sure that we get here early enough and on, on time. So, you know, it's 6.40, uh, I'm in the car alone by myself uh, because I'm waiting for certain people to get out there. But the, I'm thinking, Lord, I still don't know exactly what I'm, like the angle I'm supposed to come at this. I, I can do this. So I'm, I'm really praying because I really pray about these messages. I'm like, Lord, just tell me to like make it relevant and real to people. So it's like, I just really need something. I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe he's not going to give it to me this time. So my family finally loads up in the car. We're already five minutes late. I'm a little frustrated. We pull out. We pull down our road. We've got this long road into our property, and then we pull out onto our little country road. And it's the craziest thing because we leave super early in the morning on Sunday, and there's nobody on the roads. It's quite wonderful. We blow through San Antonio, no traffic. I get there, and I'm like, a car is coming down our country road. I'm like, what? First of all, what is this guy doing on the road? It's Sunday morning. Go back to bed, right? But he's coming at this speed that I'm like, okay, I could rush out, like I could, you know, spin out and get out in front of him, kick the gravel up and get out in front of him. But then I'd kind of look like I'm in this rush and, you know, I want to, and he's my neighbor apparently, so I want to be chill. So I was like, all right, I'll wait and let him pass me. So I waited and this guy just going so slow and do, 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 drives past me. I'm like, I'm like thinking I'm already five minutes late. I should have just bolted. I'm like, well, anyways, we'll get to the main highway. He'll go right. I'll go left. Nope. I got to go left. We get to the main highway. He turns on his left blinker and he's, he's hauling this huge trailer. It's a trailer full of lawn equipment and it's got the name of his lawn service. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy's going left. Like, ugh. I'm like, what is he? Like, what is, is he really going to mow lawns at 7, 30, 7 a.m. on a Sunday? Like, doesn't he know this is Sunday? And I was starting to get a little irritated. And I was like, well, we'll get on the road. It's 60 miles an hour. I'll just blow past him. We'll get on the road. And he's poking along at 45 the whole way. And I cannot get past him. And I'm like, man, I've got, like, I've got, does this guy not realize I'm going to church and I'm speaking this morning? <laughs> I don't know what he's going to mow the lawn. Like, 
First of all, what's he going to mow the lawn on Sunday morning? You going to wake people up at 7 a.m.? Like, what is he doing? And, you know, you get a little judgy. You're like, well, shoot, maybe he should. Doesn't he know he should be at church on Sunday? Like, you know, and I'm, I'm, I kind of think now he was probably going to mow the lawn at his church before. The, anyway, but so I'm getting frustrated. Like, I'm like, it's a 60 mile an hour zone. The dude's going 45. And I'm like riding his tail. And Emily's like, back off, Joel. I'm like, we're already late. So we'd already, like, we left a little bit late. And I was like, all right, well, anyway, there's a shortcut I take to get Interstate 10. It goes through my parents' neighborhood. And I'm like, well, once we get to the shortcut, I'll make up some time and, you know, blow through my parents' neighborhood. Nobody, nobody will be there and notice. So we pull up and guy turns on his right blinker right at my shortcut. <laughs> and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. What is this dude doing? It's Sunday morning. He's on my road. Sundays, the road is mine. Like, nobody's supposed to be out at this time, okay? I'm out this time early in the morning. And second of all, he's going really slow. And I'm like, what is the deal here? And then he goes, and so we're following him all the way through my parents' neighborhood, winding around. There's these three roundabouts. Do, do, do. And I'm like, gosh, I'm losing time here. So I'm like, all right, out of the neighborhood, I'm sure he's going to go left and go into the city. We're going right to I-10. Nope. Turns on his right blinker. And Emily's like, don't worry, you'll be able to get around him. I'm like, I don't think we're ever going to get around him, baby. <laughs> so finally, like after following this dude forever at 45 miles an hour in a 60 to 65 zone, I get on I-10 and I'm ticked. I'm like, I'm getting out of here. We're going to church. And then it hit me. The Lord answered my prayer. Dang it. Because our verse this morning is this. We're talking about gratitude, but I want to specifically talk about contentment and learning to be content no matter what's happening in your life. This verse, but godliness with contentment is great gain. We brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we'll be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. So how did that experience relate to this? Well, here's what I know about everybody in this room. Every one of you have an area of your life where you're just a little bit frustrated because it's not quite what you think it should be. For some of you, you're looking and you're going, I am trying to get from here to there and something is standing in my way. You know, I want the perfect marriage, but my husband keeps messing it up. I would have the perfect marriage if it weren't for my husband. That's a joke, right? You wouldn't be married if you didn't have it. Anyway. And you're going, man, and and here's another one I hear all the time. Like, man, I'm growing so much spiritually, but my husband's just not catching up. I'm so spiritually mature and he's just slowing us down. And you start, you know, if my husband would just be more of a godly person, everything would be okay. Right? You don't have to answer. But I know. And some of you, you feel like you're like going 45 miles an hour, but you're made for 60 or 70 or 80. You're like, I'm a V10, baby, and I'm going in like 45. Like, what's the deal here? I'm made to put the pedal to the metal. And it's just, you keep hitting this block and there's a guy with an F-150 poking along for a Sunday drive in front of you. And you're like, I'm made for more. And, And listen, I believe that all of us in some way should feel this sense that we're made for more because when God comes into your heart, what it says, he fills you and he calls you to the greatness that you're called to. He's made you to do great and amazing things with his power at work in you. And so there should be this kind of divine discontentment and sense that I'm made for more. But at the same time, we have to learn to have this contentment, godliness with contentment, and recognize that where we are right now, we need to accept that and embrace that because God has something for us right in the middle of it. And for some of us, the cause of our discontentment right now and our frustration is we feel like we deserve something that we're not getting and you're walking around kind of upset going, man, I, I really, I deserve this and I'm not getting it. And because of the nature of the world we live in, we've got a lot of things that we kind of take for granted. And we start to think we deserve all sorts of stuff. And we go, man, this is just, it, life really stinks. Because I really deserve this and I'm not getting this. But you know, it's really hard to be grateful for something you think you're owed. And for some of us, our discontentment is because we're comparing our journey to somebody else's. 
right? You're going, man, you know, my brother, like, he just has not played his cards right, but he's doing way better financially than me. And I've been really careful and faithful over here. And that's not fair. And you're watching and you're going, he shouldn't have had all that good stuff happen to him. We're over here struggling financially, but I'm a person of integrity. And he's not. Kind of like me going, I'm on my way to preach at a church. He's just going to mow the lawn. <laughs> and you get a little self-righteous. Or maybe you start going, man, God, what? How come you let him have that? And I didn't get it, right? And we create all this discontentment. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Keeping a perspective on the challenges we face, because this, this idea is that Paul is saying this, listen, you need to learn to have this sense of contentment and gratitude for where you're at right now. But it's really hard because we live in a world full of more. Everything that we live... You ever notice it's just bigger, better, faster? Everything's bigger, better, faster. And if we're not careful, we can actually get so focused on certain things that we lose track of the big picture of God is doing in our lives. And we just find ourselves in this constant malaise of place of discouragement and discontentment with life. And we go, man, this isn't what it was supposed to look like. So I want to show you the scientific uh, study that was done. And if you've seen this before, don't, you know, don't ruin it for everybody else. But this is going to require some serious attention from you, okay? So this is an, a test of your attention. And I want to show you it on the screens. And when you watch this on the screens, I need you to really focus because I want to make sure you get this number right, okay? So if you've seen this before, don't ruin it for everybody else. But for those of you, uh, everybody, everybody else, watch this really carefully and, and follow the instructions. And let's see if you can get this right. Here we go. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? How many? The correct answer is 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? <laughs> this video is from research by Daniel Simons and Christopher Chabri and is copyrighted. First time I, said, I saw that, I was like, gorilla? That is no gorilla. I'm like, I don't miss things. I catch everything. And then I didn't even realize that gorilla walked in. Not only did he walk in, he's like. I think it's a picture of what happens to us sometimes in life. We get so focused on one tiny thing that we miss big things that come into the room. Sometimes we're so focused on counting and building and making sure we've got everything under control that we miss maybe somebody in our own home that's struggling. And we don't see it because we've been so focused on counting that little thing. And how often does that happen? We get so laser focused on, I've got to have this. I got to get this right. I got to count this. And then all of a sudden, we look back and realize, oh my gosh, how did I miss that huge thing that was right in front of me? The big giant gorilla that walked into the room and I never saw it. This is something we call in psychology, it's a cognitive bias called selective abstraction. It's focusing on a detail out of context while ignoring other aspects of a situation. It's so easy to get so laser focused on the thing you don't have or on making sure that you have this or making sure this is taken care of that you miss the bigger picture. And this is where gratitude comes in because it helps us lift our perspective and take our eyes off the tiny little things that aren't right and focus on all of the bigger picture. And listen to me, there's a lot of stuff that's right in your life. And this is where Paul says something pretty powerful in 1 Thessalonians. He says this, Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. How many times in our lives we go, God, if you would just God, what's your will for me? Show me your will. Wouldn't it be nice if you wrote it down somewhere? Ta-da! 
Give thanks in all circumstances. God's will for you. You go, well, yeah, but what's, I need to know the like more. Like, what else? That's where it starts. Give thanks in all circumstances and be grateful for what you've got right now and learn to be content. Saying, yeah, God, I know there's more for me and I want more. But I'm going to be grateful for where you've got me right now. Because apparently there's something I need right now. And if I engage in the present moment and don't check out, and I'm not always dreaming or not always thinking about what used to be, if I stay focused, I'm going to believe you've got something for me right now. So I'm going to lift my vision and say, where can I find the good things God is doing around me and be grateful in all circumstances? So I'm going to look at those three things that I kind of taught myself this morning from the driver that was poking along in front of me. Because the first thing I realized is so many times we ruin our own contentment because we don't like the speed that God is doing things at in our life. And how many times, that's most of my life, I'm like, God, it's not happening fast enough. I heard a guy say one time, there are no microwaves in God's kitchen, only crock pots. <laughs> and you go, God, I want my burrito now. And he's like, well, put it in the, th you're over here. And I'm like, but that's going to take a while. And he's like, yeah, but it'll be perfectly good. So you turn that thing on and you're waiting and you're waiting. And just about the time you think you're about to die and keel over from hungry, bing, burrito's ready. And you're like, it's too late now. It's too late. <laughs> but it's not. And we get this frantic sense of how fast things need to happen in our lives. And I think the older you get, maybe you get a little more frantic about it. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and he was, apart from him getting a kid, uh, kidney transplant, he's probably not going to live much longer. And um, he was saying, it's hard because he's like, I have this frantic sense of wanting to soak up and live what God has for me, but I can't speed up God's timeline and I can't speed up life. He's like, but I can slow down God's timeline. I was like, well, that's a good point. <laughs> but I was thinking, man, that, how many of us, we feel that where you get to this certain age and you go, God, I'm just not where I thought I would be. I thought I was going to be further along. A lot of guys tell me they feel this. I've felt this. And you go, I was supposed to be further along in life than this. And I'm looking around, I'm going, how am I going to ever, am I ever going to fulfill these dreams that I've had in my heart? Is God ever going to allow me to accomplish those? And sometimes I get frustrated with God because I was like, I'm like, God, why did you put this in me, this desire to do great things, if you're going to just leave me disappointed? And sometimes we feel that, that sense of just like, man, am I ever going to be able to accomplish the, the, the hopes and dreams that I had? God, are you intentionally holding me back from this? I feel like you put an F-150 with a trailer poking along in front of me. And I don't know how much more time I've got to accomplish this. And we get these big expectations and dreams and we get frustrated all the time. I was talking to my dad about this the other day. And uh, I said, Dad, how do you keep from getting so disappointed? You seem like you're rarely disappointed. He's like, well, Joel, I just always lower my expectations. <laughs> like, that's horrible advice, Dad. <laughs> but he goes, well, but when he explained it, what he, what he was actually saying is he's like, I've learned to be content believing that right now, what God's got in my life is what I need. And if he gives me an opportunity to get in a passing lane and go around the, the car that's going 45 in front of me, when I know I'm made to be going 90, but I'm going 45, he's going to open up a passing lane for me. And I don't need to force it. He's going to open it and make a way for me. And I was like, that's what he means by lowering his expectations. It's not really lowering your expectations. It's trusting that God knows what you need right now, and he's going to give you what you need. And if you're going slower than you wanted right now, and it's taking longer than you thought, apparently that's what you need, and there's something you're learning in the process. So you be grateful for what you're learning right now. So many times the speed thing gets in the way for us. Another thing that gets in our way is the entitlement. Sunday mornings, this is my highway. I think nobody else should be on the road. I'm out here doing the Lord's work. Clear the, clear the path for me, Lord. No traffic. And we come down to these expectations, and we don't maybe say it out loud, but you go, well, don't I, I deserve this. And a lot of times the world will tell you this. You deserve this. Let's be honest. Do you know what humanity deserves? nothing. <laughs> we had actually probably deserve, I mean, we do deserve condemnation. Hell, it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We deserve condemnation and hell, but you know what God did? He's like, hey, I love you so much, and you don't even deserve that love, but I love you so much. I'm going to pour out condemnation on my son. He's going to pay the price, and then he's just going to give you grace. Thank goodness we don't get what we deserve. Amen. Jesus got what we deserved, but then he gave us grace. And that's a foundation for so much in our life. We go, man, I just, and some of you know that. You're like, man, where I came from, I don't deserve where I am today. But others of us, we, 
we've been pretty moral, upright people. And we're like, I've done things right. I never smoked or chewed or went with girls that do. And I'm a, <laughs> I'm a good person. And you start to think maybe you deserve a little bit of the good stuff. But you have, I have to remind myself all the time, nope, Joel, you are a total punk. You deserve nothing but condemnation and hell. But God poured out all that wrath on his son and then he gives you nothing but grace. And man, that'll keep things in perspective, won't it? Yo, man, anything good that comes into my life, thank you, Lord. It is from you, and I am so grateful for it. We have to avoid this entitlement mentality. So many things in our world we take for granted because really, in big perspective, we live in a pretty good world right now. You know, it's really amazing. I was shocked a couple weeks ago that the election didn't turn into rioting and people burning things down. I was like, wow, this is amazing. It's amazing that we kind of all sort of get along kind of still amazing and we aren't killing each other. That's amazing because throughout history, people haven't traditionally gotten along and agreed on democracies and stuff like that. It's really amazing that this has lasted this long, this good peace that we're living in. You go, yeah, not everything's right. Not everything's perfect. I understand that, but it's really quite amazing what we live in today. We have it pretty good and we've got to get rid of this entitlement mentality that I deserve this. I, you know, there's certain things I deserve. And when you do that, it opens the door for gratitude. And then the third thing is that comparison thing. C.S. Lewis, he said, comparison is the thief of joy. And how many of us are sabotaging our own joy? Maybe you could say happiness. Happiness and joy aren't the same thing. Uh, and happiness isn't a good thing to aim at. But how many of us are stealing our own joy because we're constantly comparing ourselves to somebody else? And we have a little envy machine right in our hand over here. And, and, and you're scrolling through and you're trying to, you know, connect with people supposedly. And, oh, let's rejoice in other people's lives. But what are they doing in Aruba again? Seriously, how much money do they have? Sometimes we compare their vacation with our vacation while we're on vacation. <laughs> you know you've done that. You're down on the beach and you're seeing somebody else on another beach and you're like, what the? What? How the and, and here's the other thing that those phones do. You know, you're just minding your own business and you mentioned your wife or husband. Man, it'd be nice if we had such and such. And then like you're scrolling on the phone and all of a sudden that such and such, the perfect one shows up. Like the phone's been listening to you which it has. And you're like, oh, that is what I need. And you start researching and you're like, well, what's the best one? And ladies, I know how it is. Y'all look at fashion, right? She's like, oh man, if I just had that, I would just be the hottest woman in the world. <laughs> look at that. Look, hey, it would probably make me lose 20 pounds. Look at that. And, and 45 minutes later, you look up and your kids are like, mom, mom. And you're like, oh, yeah. But, but now you can't get that out of your mind. You're like, I got to get that thing. My life will not be complete until I have that thing. And here's the thing. Men, we're just as bad. You know how we are, but we, we do it with really expensive stuff. <laughs> Motorcycles, ATVs, tools. You're like, dang, man, look at that. That saw, if I, golf clubs, yeah, if I was like, dude, if I just had those golf clubs, I literally would be the next Tiger Woods. <laughs> And next thing you're like, oh man. And now everything was great, but you're like, I don't have those golf clubs. And you can't get it out of your mind and you're thinking about it and thinking about it. And then you start going to this. Well, I deserve it. I work hard. I deserve those golf clubs. And before you know it, everything's great, but you've just made yourself miserable because you're looking at all the stuff you don't have. And then the crazy thing is you get it and then life just goes back to normal. And you're still not Tiger Woods. Isn't that how we roll? Yeah. We people are crazy. We are. The answer is gratitude. It's lifting our perspective and saying, man, I'm going to choose to be grateful for what I've got right now because I'm living in a pretty good time. And here's, here's the honest truth, man. Most of us are living the dreams we had for ourselves 20 years ago. You go, man, God, if you'll just give me children, I, love, I will be so happy and content. And then he gave you the children. And y'all are crying out, Lord, deliver me from evil. <laughs> Why, do, why does it have to be so hard, God? And he's like, this is what you asked for. Like, yeah, but I wanted perfect ones. <laughs> and he gives us what we want, and then it comes with other stuff, right? There's a blessing and a burden with everything that God gives us. 
And that's where we're at. But I would encourage you, man, most of us, we are living just, I know there's not everything's perfect in your life. And some of you are facing some really hard things. I'm not trying to undermine that. But the reality is you're going to be able to face those things better when you keep your perspective lifted. The G.K. Chesterton, my favorite author, he says this, I would maintain that thanks are the highest form of thought and that gratitude is happiness doubled by wonder. What he's saying here is he's like, man, if you want to lift your, your ability to think on a higher level, you start with gratitude. And because anybody can point out what's wrong. It takes anybody can point out what's wrong. It takes a whole extra level of thought to go, yeah, there's some stuff that's wrong, but look at all the stuff that's right. I'm not going to focus on, on the, the tiny little things. I'm going to focus on the bigger picture of all that God is doing in my life. And really, guys, we've got it pretty amazing and good. And yes, not everything is perfect, but here's the thing. Whatever God's got in your life right now, whatever he's placed in your life, there's something he wants to teach you through it. So we need to learn contentment with where we are right now. And yes, there should be a call in you to greatness and to do more. But right now, we need to learn to be grateful for what we have right now in everything give thanks. It doesn't say give thanks when things are great. It says in everything give thanks. Even if it's the hardest time you've ever been through right now, it's going to start, if you get focused on gratitude, things are going to start to look up. Your vision is going to be lifted as you focus on gratitude. So I want to close on something. It's obviously Thanksgiving week. There's a section of the Psalms, Psalms 113 to Psalm 118, that the Hebrew, uh, the, the Jews call um, the Hallel, H-A-L-L-E-L. So I want to encourage you guys, I'm going to read Psalm 113 today, but usually they read Psalm 113 to 118. But what I want to encourage you guys to do, this is your homework for this week. You're like, I don't need more stuff to do this week. But I would encourage you to do this as, as an, a, a, just a thanksgiving to the Lord. I'm going to read Psalm 113 right now. I want you tonight, before you go to bed, to read Psalm 114. Monday, I want you to read Psalm 115. Tuesday, Psalm 116. Wednesday is super short, Psalm 117. So you'll still have time to prepare Thanksgiving dinner. It'll be a super short read. And then I want you to close out on Thursday with your family, reading Psalm 118, which is one of my favorite Psalms. So I'm going to start with Psalm 113. It says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. That's something to be grateful for. You woke up to see another sunrise this morning. Go, thank you, Lord, that I get to see another day. The Lord is exalted over all the nations. His glory is above the heavens. You're looking around, you go, man, there's so many things wrong in the world. Listen, it doesn't matter what's happening in Russia or Ukraine or Israel or China or Taiwan or even in the United States of America. The Lord is ruling and reigning from on high and he hasn't forgotten about us. In fact, it says this, it says, who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high but stoops down to look upon the heavens and the earth. He has not forgotten us, y'all. He hasn't forgotten you. He's looking down on your situation right now and he is working all things together for the good of those who love him, for those who are called according to his purpose. So you can be confident and content right where you are. It says he raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with the princes, with the princes of his people. He settles the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. I would encourage you guys, read this whole sequence, Psalm 113 to 118. And just begin to focus on all the things you're grateful because listen, grateful for. Because listen, yes, there's a lot of things that are wrong, but you can always find the right something that's right in it. This week you're going, oh man, the whole family's coming over, and I'm not looking forward to about two of them. <laughs> but thank God I have family coming over. I'm not spending it alone, right? Something amazing to be grateful for. Go, man, everything's not right in my marriage, but man, thank God that I've got a, a spouse that's stuck with me. And you know, nobody gets it wrong all the time. <laughs> Find the good things that your spouse is doing. Focus on those things and encourage those good things. Your kids, focus on those good things about your kids because we have so many things to be grateful for. And if you can't find anything else to be grateful for, drop to your knees and say, thank you, God, that I didn't get what I deserved. Thank you, Lord, that you are good and your goodness and your, your kindness endures forever. And that's my prayer for you guys this week, is that we will walk in gratitude, not just this week, but the rest of our lives. But this week, we specifically focus on the Lord's goodness in our life, and we stay focused on that. No matter how hectic and crazy it gets, stay focused on the Lord's goodness. You guys receive that?
Let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you that you are good and your mercy endures forever. So we will just remind ourselves of that. I pray that every morning this week, Lord, we'd read through those passages and we're just set our mindset to gratitude, that, that thanks and just say, Lord, we are so grateful for what we have. And we're not gonna focus on what we don't have. We're not gonna compare our journey to others. We're not gonna get frustrated at the time or the speed of things that you're doing. Lord, we know that you who began a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. The path of the righteous, like the light of dawn, shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And you who began a good work, you will complete it. If you're here this morning, you've not given your life to Jesus, I'm gonna say a prayer in just a second. This is the first step to getting on the path of walking with him. I'm gonna say this prayer, and if you say it in your mean in your heart, God is gonna come and transfer you out of the kingdom of darkness. He's gonna set you up with him in eternity. It starts when we say this prayer. Let's all say it together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way, and we turn to your way. Help us walk in your truth. Amen. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We got some resources for you back under the Do It Again sign. Man, I hope you all have an amazing Thanksgiving. Keep gratitude at the focus of all of it. And you guys have a great week. We'll be back next week. I'll be speaking. We'll be starting our Christmas series. See you then. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.